start of the 30 p.m. turn, the axis, the forces here. Oh, well, Royals baseball playing the Indians, losing of course. Kipnis solo home run. Damn you, Kipnis. Anyway, um, well, I mean, that's actually pretty good. Way to go, Kipnis. Home run. But sucks that it came against us. Anyway, we are back here at Castron. It is a 30 p.m. turn, a little asynchronicity here between timescapes. But on this one, we are about to begin the German, um, uh, I guess, movement phase. And some items to mention, I guess, before we start talking about, or I, before I start talking about, what am I saying? We, before I start talking about what the plans are, was the use of air power. Of course, we know the Germans have exceptional air power and that the Allies do not. And the Allies um, attempted to do interdiction. They failed in their role. Uh, the Germans spent both of their planes on interdiction efforts. They both succeeded. And when you do that, you get to roll on the interdiction table here on the handy caster employer aid. And I rolled a three. So I was able to get a two, just one away. Wait, was that right? Oh, I'd had to roll a one, I guess, on that. But I got a good result, so I got a two which meant that I got to pick two red box units and put them out of supply. Uh, a unit that's out of supply suffers a lot of, you know, not great things happening to it. It largely, the most, uh, among the many ill effects it suffers include, sounding like a pharmacy ad here, uh, they have their MA, they only move at half of their normal speed. Uh, they also suffer an ER, um, minus two to their ER ratings anytime they're involved in any sort of ER calculation. And they also suffer half of their, they lose half their attack strength if they attack. Um, mainly the Germans or the Axis forces, the Axis. The thinking behind this was instead of having to go for die roll modifiers like we used them for the first round, that's not really gonna be so necessary because in many ways, um, the Axis are gonna have at least this turn to be able to bring their forces uh, to bear on a single points. And it's not going to be like they have a lot of spread out attacks where they're sort of diluting their overall attack strength and they kind of need that extra push in some of the more dicier attacks. Instead, what they thought is, hey, we kind of have some units here. They're holed up. We need to kind of attack them and see if we can weaken them while they're isolated and still manage to put Fayid um, out of supply. So the best way to kind of achieve that result, at least in the near term and also long term, would be to put as many um, threatening units coming out of the West out of supply as possible. So that was a long way of saying I basically got the ability to put down two out of supply markers. Now I chose, or the Axis, I should say, chose to put those on the armored units here, right? So there's the headquarters or this HQ unit. And then I put on these two, that was my original targets. Because the thinking was these are the units with the absolute most punch in this group that's coming on the board right now. And I would like to keep them from just like zooming down the road. And in fact, if they had four movement, they wouldn't be able to come down the road and, and join the battle yet. They'd have to wait till next turn. But uh, the interdiction rules say that um, the other player, so like let's say, you know, as the Axis player, I targeted those. Well, the Allied player can, in response, choose to put, for every one marker I place, they can choose to put two out of supply markers on any artillery or MA um, or red box movement allowance guys. And that's what they did. They decided, you know, hey, Instead, instead of having our really potent armor um, taken out of the game, or at least delayed in coming in, why not have the self-propelled artillery, which we already know is like a half strength because of scenario rules. And then also, why not take the sort of, you know, <laughs> our friend zero-powered anti-tank unit that's got a nice silhouette, and then this recon unit, you know, it's just a one-strength unit, has good movement, but just one strength, not, not totally necessary, although it is helpful, I think, that might, that might actually allow for combined arms shift. I have to look for that anyway. But we're just going to give them the out supply markers. They're just not going to move as fast or as far. And I think that's that's a willing, that's an okay trade off because I'd rather have that than have the tanks um, not be able to kind of join the battle during their movement phase. Um, yeah, so that was the thinking behind that. So anyway, we'll see. The Germans may have to continue with their interdiction efforts. It was clear weather that made it very easy for them. They suffer greater penalties on. Was it rain turns? They suffer a plus two on the die rolls on rain turns. The Allies only suffer plus one on cloudy and rain, and the Germans suffer plus one on cloudy turns. But it was it was clear, so it was a good time to you know fly to fly the planes. Anyway, so here's the attack plan. I'm not gonna go. I'm not actually gonna do it, but I am gonna describe my thinking, and then we'll see the results. 
hopefully they go as I talk about them here, smashingly well. Um, the idea here is that we have a lot of spread out of forces, but we're going to condense on two points. And the two points I think we're going to, that would be best to go for are going to be overrunning this artillery unit, attacking the stack, and then as well as bringing a stack over here and attacking the stack from the rear. That way we can sort of begin to cut the supply off as well as put pressure on both sides of the stack and keep them. If they try to retreat, they might take losses. So the idea is that I'm going to take basically all these tanks here. It's just three points, but very potent. Take this uh, mechanized infantry, uh, this Italian tank unit, <clears throat> this armored car, and I think this anti, this heavy anti-air. And we're all going to come around the side here and attack from this point. Whereas these forces here, which are quite potent in their own right, they're covered up, right? But that's a nice five strength tank. Uh, company. I've got a battalion over here of, uh, was that recon? It might be dumb there. Yeah, that's recon. And then we also have anti-air there and uh, a nice mo um, mechanized infantry there, or motorized infantry there, not mechanized, jeez, motorized. And they can come over here and overrun this unit, or one of these stacks will overrun that unit, and they can all join together and kind of surround here and try to attack that stack together. I'm not able to have enough MP to really get around and do a nice, um, overrun from here because there's just not a, oh, sorry. there's just not enough MPs for these guys to come over and do an overrun and this stack could do it but it's only five strength and there are four points here <clears throat> and a one-to-one -one overrun is not really something I'm that interested in trying to accomplish I would like to get at least two to one if possible um, three to one would be ideal obviously because again if you fail the combat coordination, you're, you're shifted down to left. So you really got to think about that or at least start planning and thinking ahead. Because even though we have the armor car with the radium 7, it would probably work. But you never, never know. Anyway, so that's kind of the plan. Uh, I'm going to try to carry it out. We'll see what happens. And when we come back, it'll be probably the aftermath of the Axis uh, movement phase. All right, here at the conclusion of the Axis movement and combat phases, uh, heading to what we would have the second part of the 30 p.m. turn, the Allied response. And really just very, very good. Very good results. <laughs> so what we initially, as I outlined in the um, opener, some of my initial thoughts about attacking this position was that I was going to sort of do a pincer here and swing around and attack that force here and then bring forces here. The only problem was is that my forces that were capable of coming around here was the bulk of my strength and this, this units that were over here, as you can see, they were, uh, what was it, 11 uh, factors of defense. And so I really couldn't just split my forces and attack what would be the weaker stack that I could hopefully eliminate and just get rid of units. It made more sense instead to make, concentrate my forces around this uh, these armor grouping here of the British. Um, I think that's British. Maybe that's the American. I'll have to look. Maybe I've gotten this all wrong and it's just the French and the American forces because it is green. <laughs> anyway, the colors, you know, it's just uh, good versus bad for me right now. Uh, again, probably people are screaming heresy at the at the screen right now. Sorry about that. Um, I'll, I'll, I promise I'll do better. Uh, but the sum gist of it was is that the units that were there were quite strong and I figured, you know, right now until it's the time to strike because other armored units will be pouring down the road soon. And uh, if I can just get even uh, them to move or do some step losses, that would greatly help the uh, access cause. So I grouped around it. I got some three to one odds uh, because I had my leaders coordinated. I was able to easily pass the check. I was using this, um, this nice armored car with its value of seven. Really, really nice uh, unit there. And uh, when we netted out all the ER calculations, oh, I should say also I overran an artillery that was there. So, you know, one more uh, unit in the dead pile of French artillery uh, did go the way of the dead pile. That was relatively um, routine and easy to do. And then the main attack at three to one, I had a nice negative one modifier in the final roll, rolled a one. Got a zero as a result, which was a Defender 2 retreat. So one of the better results you can get actually in the CRT, Defender 3 or Defender Eliminated obviously is the best, but man, that's pretty good for a three to one attack to get the absolute best result. So the um, the allies here took step losses. They had to take one on their recon or, or their um, infantry unit with armor accompaniment. Uh, that was their strong ER unit. They had to take a loss there because it was the uh, lead unit. And then they also opted to have the infantry take a loss as well. So even though they only lost a couple of points of attack and defense, they're now much more brittle because one more step, obviously, and they go away. So they had to retreat across the, uh, the wadi there, leaving these units exposed. 
Um, but there's not much we can really do about that until we start moving them this, this turn, I guess. Uh, then the Axis forces used their uh, motorized uh, phase movement where they can use half of their red box movement. And what they did is they brought their forces that had kind of gathered around here and they zoomed them over here now into uh, Sedeguia. Sedeguia, Sedeguia, they had Sedeguia. I'm probably getting my vowels all wrong. Uh, that's okay. It happens, right? Just like Julia Child says, no one really notices, right? If you drop the chicken on the floor, just don't say it. Anyway, <laughs> so the units here, they've kind of marched there, and the idea is that they're going to put continued pressure now for these, um, for the allies to respond because they are cutting the off the road here. We've cut this off. So we have successfully cut off the Fayed Pass again. Hopefully this will stay cut off um, because I realize it's not really worth it to attack it because we still have what... One, two, three, we still have at least four more uh, axis uh, phases of attack and activation. So hopefully by the third one, we can launch an attack on it and take Fayed Pass and hopefully still have forces that are in good shape to do so. So it is a little bit of a gamble. I could have focused my forces there and probably easily taken it. Well, not easily, but I could have focused. And I didn't. I chose instead to go for the armor attack and it was very advantageous. So now I position myself here. We'll see if I once again have overextended myself and if I will pay the price as the allied armor begins rolling down the road. I don't think that'll be the case, though, because unlike last time, I have far more defense factors here than I did before. You see, I got a 3, 6, 9, oh, geez, 13, 14, 15 points. So, yeah, it's going to be very difficult for the um, allies to dislodge me out of here. So, I don't know. It's going to be very interesting. Yeah, at first, I thought, oh, no, the Axis did not get quite the smashing kind of results they need in the beginning to have sustained success. But that sort of attack there has really um, bolstered my spirits for the Axis' ability to hold the victory hexes. They did secure um, this hex for the city Buzid. They also need to secure this for the smashing victory as well as to get the fight pass. But I think that's going to be sort of a do or die moment at the end anyway. So now we've got the allies coming up on the rest of their turn. They have their forces located over here. Remember, we did do interdiction, so the tanks will be able to move and that armor or that artillery unit and this headquarters, but that's about it. Oh, the other ones can move. They just will move at half, half speed. So then we'll be able to get down the road completely. I think the best they're going to be able to do is get to... Let's see what four I made. And we'll let's see how be. And one, and two, and three. Of course, the artillery can go there. And, and one, and two, and three, four. And the other units can pretty much go there. So they won't quite make it to the battle, which is uh, what the Axis kind of hoped for. They would have liked to not have the tanks come in, but... Nonetheless, having dilution of uh, allied strength is, is worthy unto itself. All right, so that's the end of this beginning part. Looking pretty good. We'll see what the um, allies can cook up as a response. Okay, thinking here we are at the beginning of the allied movement phase, and I'm sort of in a pickle. i got to figure out what I want to do here. Uh, the Germans have just been able to really, that two losses really hurt. I mean, it does really make that stack much more brutal. It's it's just unfortunate. I need them kind of to be the nuisance stack, and unfortunately they've been a little more reduced in that fact. Here's some thoughts, though. Weak points. Germans don't have a lot, or the ally or excess powers don't have a lot. The main one I can see is to attack this town, because they're drawing their supply only from the south here. And that's because even though the units of fight are about to be cut off, they still, until they have out of supply, they still exert a zone of control and they're blocking the um, access supply point coming from the east. So the thought is maybe I could come down here and somehow attack this uh, fairly weak unit, even though it has two defense points, and knock it out and sort of by holding this road, uh, sort of cut off the uh, access supply. I mean, essentially it would stop there and you could reach around, I guess, and grab it. <clears throat> They could do sort of, you know, in these sort of Vance on Boris games, sort of like trace supply, you can come up with some very interesting uh, routes that you may not think would exist in real life or could actually be accomplished. But um, nonetheless, that's sort of how it works, right? You got to have some sort of supply rules, I guess. But I'm really less convinced that's a viable option because even though I could use these tanks here to come down, I have two eight movement, I have that um, infantry with armor accompaniment, and then we also have this uh, tank unit here. The infantry couldn't make it, but these two could. They could zoom around and they could actually attack. They could just make it and attack there. And then I could reinforce it, so to speak, by having my other red box movement units, which include tanks that are off board right now, right? The, uh, the uh, reinforcements that are coming out of here, the two tanks that we chose not to have um, out of supply, right? 
they could kind of get like halfway and then zoom in on the um, half movement they would get on the allied movement phase, motorized movement phase. But I'm just not entirely sure that's that's a great idea either because, yeah, it's going to cut them off supply and they're going to want to come down and respond to that, but um, it doesn't leave a whole lot for defense over here. And I need to check this rules and make sure this is not a sudden death hex if they take that. Uh, I will be getting some reinforcements next turn though, so, you know, the thought is do I just go for this and then hope these guys kind of hold the rear, um, which is, you know, totally plausible, and then see if that's going to just do anything to upset the German plans, because right now they have cut the road off, and uh, until I can put them in some sort of hurt zone, I guess technically if I do take this, they would be marked out of supply. Well, I have to, I have to think about it then and make sure that's, that's actually possible. That may not actually be possible. I have to look, because they can still probably trace. These guys might be kind of... Uh, out of luck. That might be what I want to accomplish. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, they would be pretty much out of luck if I could take this, but these units would probably still be able to trace supply. They could just go one, two, three, four, five, you know, and still get there. Unless it was a rain turn, which could happen, and that might kind of gum things up for them. Hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. Anyway, I'm going to ponder that move, which honestly might be the best, because here's the other thing I got to think about. These uh, Axis tanks each have 15 points of defense. There's no way I'm cracking that um, with the, even the forces I have on the board. It's, I could get maybe 2 to 1 attack odds, but my units are not quite of good quality, as good quality as the Axis forces on the whole. And, um, yeah, it, it, making a 2 to 1 attack does not sound advantageous to me. I don't know, maybe taking out armor steps would be, but I don't know. It, it just seems very difficult when you're looking at these kind of like giant monster stacks of, of Axis units, of German units, and you're like, oh boy, that's, that's, that's difficult to think about taking on. Um, yeah, it's just a lot of good stuff there. Even though they're all pretty average, but I did bring the armor car over, so it does have a 7, and they have the 2. I mean, they just have, they have good stuff anyway. It's tough to think about grouping your guys, and I don't even think I could get those kind of attack values I want. These guys are only a 10 stack there, and the most I could bring is 8 more, so that'd be 18. Yeah, we can't even get close to getting to double. Yeah, so yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to even accomplish that. So maybe this, this plan to do this might be the best, because having them come to me as the allies is probably the best course of action, and it, it forces them to get the good rolls. And they'll also have to come and, and bring their forces to bear, right? They might be able to do it because they definitely have superior firepower right now. But um, I can make it difficult for them. I could definitely put at least 10, well, I could probably get around 10 or so defense points, maybe 12. Yeah, because both those armor guys are three. So yeah. I could get about 12 defense points, maybe more. And that could be definitely a pain to deal with. That would not be an easy attack by any means. Uh, but they could do it, and they could also surround me, and it could just be awful. I don't know. Anyway, i got to think about it, and when I come back, we will see what the Allies do. All right, back with the conclusion here at the end of the 30 p.m. turn for the Allied movement, and uh, just as successful as the Germans were in their turn, the Allies had smashing results of their own. Um, after some really careful <laughs> scheming and concocting and looking at the board and puzzling over movement, I was actually able to find a really opportune attack that I think was just sort of, um, it, it was, it, I'll explain it. Let me, do, let me just explain it instead of trying to give it a description, okay? So what I did basically here is I reinforced this road here because I want supply coming out of the western edge here for the Allies to continue on this road because I want to do extended operations down here. And this road still is considered in supply as long as they hold that hex, right? Because that kind of lets it come down and flow through here. So what I did here is I sort of garrisoned with those weaker uh, infantry units that I had trapped over here. I also put together some artillery units here, just sort of back it up and give it strength in case the, uh, the second part of my plan didn't work and the uh, access forces sort of came up the road and decided to attack. Um, so it's not a really strong position per se, it couldn't withstand maybe both those stack stacks attacking it, but it's fairly strong and, and can hold out and it's not, not a pushover by any means. What I was able to do, though, is take my sort of tanks that were here and the tanks were in the western edge and the armored car that was also here from that infantry stack and making a nice little curious route that went up through here, down, and just on the edge of the zone of control here and came right here and crossed. This was the crossing I was looking at. I was like, that looks weak. It's just outside the zone of control of this German stack or this uh, Axis stack. And uh, there's always a bridge whenever they cross there. It's in the rules. It's assumed to be a bridge there when you cross a wadi with a road. 
So I knew I could get across here and attack the unit here at City Buzid, which was uh, this unfortunate chap, this battalion that definitely uh, sacrificed itself, I suppose, or died a uh, whatever sort of death, either glorious or inglorious, however you see it. They were here, right, holding that road down for the Axis supply, because as I discussed in my last video, the southern route was the weak point I saw for the Axis forces. So it was a risky attack, but I brought down a tank and an armored infantry unit, and we attacked um, past the combat coordination rules, so we were able to keep our 2 to 1 odds, had a combat shift, made it 3 to 1, and after the roll, we got the exact same roll the Germans did, a 1 with a minus 1 uh, DRM on it, so it was a defender to retreat. That unit was vaporized, so it allowed um, the two units that attacked from here to go 1, 2. I brought down the tanks from the western edge, and they were able to just, through their 8 movement, make it to here along with the armored car. And so with the successful elimination of that unit and the advance here, the uh, attacking units were able to sneak onto this mountain, and using the extra motorized movement uh, given to me at the end of my red box units, there was just enough to go uh, half, that was that counts as one, it's one and a half, and then again the mountain hex was one and a half, making it um, a total of four, right? So wait, was that right? Did I do that right? Oh right, because that was one. They were right here. So it was one, one and a half, two and a half, and then another one half. So that equal four. So now I have a nice nine stack sitting down here. And actually we'll pivot over here so you can kind of we can draw these guys out. So I'm hanging on this mountain here with this, and that means I'm cutting off this road in my zones of control. I believe. I hope I'm right on that. I need to check to make sure my zones of control extend out of mountain hexes. Oh, I have an armored inventory, so it should work. Um, which means the Axis forces who have their supply point down here are cut off now from supply. I'll need to figure out which ones are actually affected by it. Here, I get better light if I come from this angle. Um, but I believe this stack will be out of supply, and this stack will definitely be out of supply, which is huge, very, very big. Or not out of supply, it'll be put on emergency supply, but it means I have to react and respond or they'll soon fall out of supply, right? And I'm on a mountain hex, which is great defensive terrain. It means we're going to have to assault to get me out of there. And uh, it's quite a little stack here, right? I've got an armored infantry, some tanks, an armored car, more tanks, and the headquarters. So if you put that together, 3, 6, uh, 9, 12, uh, 14 defense points, that's no, oof, that's going to be tough. That's going to be really tough. Now, they themselves can be easily put out of supply, but I think that's well worth it because it's going to have to draw the German or the Axis forces down south to deal with this. Because right now the Fayed Pass, of course, is still blocking supply to the east. They may reconsider taking that now. Um, because it will be put out of supply, but it, it's still going to take another turn before it goes to, or if we put an emergency supply, it'll take another turn before it actually goes out of supply uh, and suffers the sort of uh, ill effects on ER that's really helpful in attacking it. But, um, yeah, so now nah, Germans, man, they thought they had a good upper hand, got the nice extension, and then the Allies were just able to slip right by them and make a really daring attack and come down here and cut their supply. So Germans are going to have their hands full on this next turn as we go into it. So let's go ahead and just do the weather rolls while I'm sitting here, and then we'll put the reinforcements down, and then I think I'll stop and think about the next turn. So let's do the weather roll for the next turn. Still going to be clear. Not so good for the uh, allies. The allies do get some nice reinforcements, so let's go take a look at that real quick. Because the Germans, as you know, have everything they have on the board, right? So we're going to get this nice... Uh, fun tank unit. Unfortunately, it can't move unless we, it, it's either like approached by an enemy unit or we roll every turn we get one roll to beat its ER rating. If we do, then it's um, to roll lower than the ER, then it gets to go on the board. And then we also have coming on the board here, the um, these units, right? The first armored. So, you know, some other nice little things. Another airplane's going to come in, still not very effective, but hey, it's another, it's at least can airstrike and it can do some other things. That's nice. Um, some more looks like self-propelled artillery, another recon unit that's sort of constituted together. Uh, we also have, uh, looks like another armored infantry unit, which is really looking good. That's a really strong unit, and another armor. So, you know, some things are coming back on the board. We're going to be able to reinforce this middle here. And uh, we're going to see if the Germans get too preoccupied with trying to reopen their supply lines. They're going to find those other units coming down the road pretty quick, and it's going to be it's going to be difficult to sort of focus their attention now. So, anyway, very interesting, very interesting. Moving on to turn 31 in the next video.